Hello everyone, it's Annie, and today I'm here with my best books that I read in 2021. I tried really, really hard to make this a top 10, but I just couldn't manage it. So this is a top 12, and I'm trying to do it in some sort of order, so like the last book of this video will be my favorite, but it's, you know, they're all amazing and I love them all so, so much. So let's get right into it. First, we have Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which is just so amazing. I read this for my vlog where I read Jess's favorite books. Jess is from her channel, Books Past Bedtime, and this is a YA thriller about a high school senior who, for her senior project, wants to disprove the person who is basically found guilty um, for a murder in her local hometown and she thinks that he is innocent and she wants to prove his innocence and it is just so masterfully done so many twists and turns it was just amazing <laughs> and I was a little bit concerned because I know YA thrillers are kind of hit and miss for me um, but this one was just superb and I cannot wait to read I think there's two more in this series I cannot wait because oh, it's just amazing. <laughs> and then we have The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan He. I love this YA sci-fi so, so much. It has cli-fi elements as well. It is set in a dystopian future where people live in floating eco-cities and like their status in society is based on a number that their family has, pretty much based on like how much pollution and stuff they caused in the past so like the lower your number the higher up you are um it was amazing it's about these two sisters and one of them is stranded on a deserted island and the other is trying to find her basically and there is such a huge plot twist in here that is really what kept it <laughs> in my top 12. i really really love this book i absolutely love the world building but the plot twist is one of the best I have ever seen in any book ever. <laughs> it totally blew my mind. I did not see it coming and Joan He is an amazing crafter of stories and worlds. It is just such an amazing book. Go read it. And then we have Girls of Paper and Fire. <laughs> First of all, this is so gorgeous. Like, oh my gosh, okay. I love this book so, so much. This is a sapphic fantasy about a girl who is named Lei and she is basically taken from her home province and sent to be a concubine at the Demon King's palace. And she meets all of the other concubine girls and that is really the heart of this book. I absolutely love all the different personalities of all of the girls and their relationships with each other and of course I absolutely adore the central sapphic relationship between Lei and Ren who she meets there and oh it's so good this book is so unapologetically feminist it deals with some really 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 hard and dark themes but it does it so well this is just I did not expect this book to be one of my favorites at the end of this year I, I have to say and it just completely pleasantly surprised me and gosh, it was so good. <laughs> I wish I could read it again for the first time. And then we have Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This was an amazing sci-fi book. I mean, we all know that The Martian was amazing, but Andy Weir really did it again with this. It was just so good. It was thrilling. It was suspenseful. It kept you on the edge of your seat. It had really really interesting scientific things as a basis that like it was obviously science fiction but it made sense like theoretically i feel like it was just such a genius book such a genius concept i don't want to give anything away because you start the book with the main character kind of having amnesia like he doesn't even know where he is or who he is and you kind of have to go through that journey with him so i don't want to give it too much away but it is just such an amazing story and in addition to being thrilling and suspenseful and like exciting, it's also really wholesome and just it has such a great friendship at the heart of this story that just really sent it over the edge and one of its characters is one of the best characters I've ever seen in science fiction. It is so amazing, so creative. I absolutely loved this book so much. 
And then we have a book that is not wholesome at all, but <laughs> She Who Became the Sun, which is probably the best debut. I definitely the best debut I've ever read this year, but probably the one that I've ever read because my gosh, Shelley Parker Chan, whoa. <laughs> They're a force to be reckoned with. Oh my God, it, it, this book blew my mind. Of course, we all know that it was comped as Mulan combined with Song of Achilles, and that is what first drew me to it. It follows an orphan girl who is basically dirt poor, and she takes on her brother's identity after he dies uh, to become a monk and basically rise up in life because girls in the society that this is based on have basically no power and no status in society. And so, oh my gosh, I, I can't even think. I love this book so much. She rises up in the ranks, becomes a monk, becomes basically a general, like the leader of an army. And oh my gosh, the characterization in this book is so good. The balance between the main character and the antagonist, they're such perfect foils of each other. It is absolutely ridiculous. Like I could write like <laughs> a literature essay on how perfect the characterization is. And of course it is sapphic and that is wonderfully done. Like it goes places. <laughs> It goes all in, <laughs> like it really does in every sense of the word, <laughs> and it is so good. Um, I cannot wait for the sequel. This is something that I will think about for a long, long time. And I also really, really love that it is historical fantasy, but there's just enough fantastical elements. It's not like too much. It's mostly based on history, and I really love that about it. And then we have Psalm for the Wild Bills by Becky Chambers. This was such a cute novella. It was solar punk. It was wholesome. It is absolutely Becky Chambers flavor. You know what I mean? It is just so cute. It's about a monk who, a non-binary monk, who goes around selling tea from their mobile tea cart that they take around with them. And they basically help people in the towns that they visit. And they meet a robot. And I absolutely love the little world building that Becky Chambers got into this novella. It is so short, but it packs such a punch and you really feel like you are in the society that used to take advantage of technology. And I don't want to give anything away, but it's so good. <laughs> the vibes in this is peak vibes and really, really such a feel good story. And I cannot wait for the sequel coming out this year. And then we have the opposite of a feel-good story. <laughs> it's another Suffolk book called The Stars and the Blackness Between Them. I have talked about this book a lot on my channel because it needs more love, okay? It is so beautiful. It is about a girl from Trinidad who is sent to live with her father in America. And while there, she meets one of her neighbors and they fall in love. And this is really a tearjerker. <laughs> It has a lot of tragic elements in it, um, very serious things, but also a great component of magical realism in there. Just enough. It is a contemporary story for the most part, but there's just enough of a fantastical element in there to make it so absolutely unique and magical. It was amazing. It was breathtaking. And I knew as soon as I finished it that it was going to be one of the best books that I've read this year and it definitely accomplished that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Plain Bad Heroines. <laughs> I loved this book so much. I know that a lot of people don't like it, but I absolutely adored it. I, it's long, but it's, it deserves it. <laughs> like it deserves to be longer, honestly, like if we're being quite honest. It is a dark academia, but it has so much more going on. It is set in two different timelines, pretty much. One in 1901, I think, at a all-girls boarding school where some tragic events happen, and then one in the present day where these three actresses are making a movie filmed at this boarding school about these tragic accidents. Or were they accidents? <laughs> and like, there's such great, creepy, dark, gothic vibes to this book. There is one of the hottest characters ever, <laughs> Harper Harper. And I just loved 
the dynamic between the three girls and oh it was so good i i don't know what else to say it was just perfect it was exactly what i wanted and it was gorgeous and the prose in this as well is just over the top so beautiful okay and then we have the only nonfiction book on this list which is disordered cosmos i raved about this book in my november wrap-up and oh, so good, so important. Seriously, one of the most important books I read ever, um, especially as someone who is going to be going into academia. I think it's really important to read, and even if you're not going into academia, the author talks about, of course she talks about science and physics, but she also really focuses on problems in academia, like racism, sexism, um, honestly so many things that I never even would have thought of um, before reading this and she really opened my eyes and I just felt like I learned so much from every single chapter of this book. I just learned more and of course it was, it is part memoir as well so you learn more about the author and her journey to become an astrophysicist. It is such a powerful book. Everyone really needs to read this, <laughs> please. It, it was so educational and so important and I highly highly recommend it. Okay so I have three more. Mal is the girl with the louding voice which was so good. This was my favorite book of the year for a long time um, until it got kind of displaced <laughs> by the next books on this list but it it is one of the best books I've ever read in my life. It follows a young Nigerian girl who is born in a very impoverished family and she's basically sold into marriage and she escapes and basically becomes a servant, but she's not really paid. And her journey was amazing, really, really emotional. Um, just seeing how hard she worked to get herself out of all of the awful situations that she had found herself in and was put in by people who took advantage of her position. Um, it, it was also just so wonderful to see her succeed at the end as well. And I, I love this book. <laughs> the audiobook is something I also really highly recommend. The narrator did a wonderful job with this story. And I just think that this is something everyone should read. It is so important and so wonderfully done. And then we have The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This is such an amazing fantasy series. Oh my gosh. I It blew my mind when I first read it because obviously I knew that everyone talked about how good it was, but I didn't know, you know, like I didn't know how good it would be. It is so good. The main character, Rin, is one of my favorite characters of all time. She's a feral little mass murderer and I love her. <laughs> she is, she starts out as a very poor girl from one of the provinces that like the empire doesn't really care about or consider an asset at all. And she moves and she takes the entrance exam to the military academy and she gets in and she just goes from there and she's so cool. <laughs> the characters in this book are phenomenal. The relationships, oh, I love the three main characters so, so much. The politics as well are so interesting and all these different nuances. There are different races and different countries that come into play and all of their interactions with each other. And the book also, well, the whole series really also takes, tackles a very important issue about um, addiction because, I mean, the poppy war, it's like, it's in the title. Um, I just love how this is inspired by real history as well, and R.F. Kong just crafts such an amazing fantasy. I cannot believe that she was 19 when she wrote this. It is a masterpiece, and it is amazing. It would have been my first favorite book of the year, if not <laughs> for this duology. <laughs> Memory Called Empire and a Desolation Called Peace. I'm counting them as one because you can't read one and then not read the second one. <laughs> this is my favorite duology that I read this year and they also became my favorite books that I have ever read in my life. 
This is an amazingly stunning <laughs> space opera with amazing world building, amazing characters, a central murder mystery, very, very interesting dichotomies between cultures and there is this central place called Texcalan, which is kind of based on the Roman Empire, and they are very all-powerful. They're an empire, and it the main character is named Mahit, and she is a diplomat from a small community from a space station that is kind of trying their hardest not to be conquered by the Texcalans, and she meets her handler basically and they fall in love and <laughs> so there is just so much in here that I cannot express to you in words you just have to read it it is one of the most gorgeous things I have ever read in my life the world building is top-notch I I would read a phone book that Arcady Martin writes for Tix Kalan like I would read anything about it. The world is so lush and so beautifully built. I just, oh, I love the two main characters, Mahit and Three Seagrass, with all of my heart. They're so cute and so wonderfully complex, and I just, I love it, and I wish this wasn't just a duology. I wish there were more, <laughs> but we'll just have to take what we can get because these are gorgeous, gorgeous books, and I, I, it was a privilege to read them. <laughs> It was so good. Please read these. <laughs> All right, and that is it for my best books of 2021 video. I really hope you enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite book you read in 2021 was. I'd love to hear about it. And let's see what my next video is going to be because I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.